This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the This is the day, this is the day when the Spirit came, when the Spirit came. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day when the Spirit came, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day when the Spirit Welcome. I'm Pastor Kathy of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Oak Park, Illinois, and you can see that I'm inside the building here. We are getting close to coming back in. Before I start with some of our announcements, let me uh, invite those of you who are first-time visitors, or maybe you've been coming to visit us for a bit of a while, to let us know that you're out there. Give us an email to visitor at goodshepherdlc.org. Again, visitor at G-O-O-D s-h-e-p-h-e-r-d-l-c dot org. Now, as I said, we're getting close to coming back into our building. We're hoping that maybe in this coming week that we will gain occupancy, but I have some access to be able to come in here and do a little bit of filming. Hopefully you also noticed in that beginning uh, opening to our welcome, you noticed the mobile that's above me here. That was put together by a group of members in the congregation now, if you remember, this was supposed to be the weekend of our huge celebration of getting back into the building. And so the members of the congregation made all of these uh, origami doves. There is a dove for each and every member of the congregation here, which is really a wonderful thing and quite uh, a piece Nola and her crew put together. Do know that if you would like to see more and even see this mobile up close, you could um, participate in one of the tours that we're putting on. We are having tours on Saturday, June 13th and Sunday, June 14th. There are emails going out that will have a sign up genius where you can sign up for a particular tour. Don't worry, we're gonna be following all of the CDC guidelines, which means there'll only be nine people in each tour, so there can be a tour guide. There will be also a greeter at the door that will be giving you gloves. Hopefully you have your own mask when you come here. If you don't have a mask, we'll have one to, to share with you also. And so we want you to see this beautiful building as it's coming together here. And I hope that you uh, see that. If you don't see the email, please do contact me because I will make sure that you get to have that survey monkey so we know when you are available to come and tour the building. We also have a couple of other things that are going on in this coming week. You'll notice that each week we have a few different things. We have connections on Zoom Mondays at 11 o'clock. We have connections on Wednesday at 7, 7 p.m. And then Deaconess Debbie is leading a book study on Thursdays at 6.30. With that, we have our worship today. Let's take three deep breaths. And now, may the worship begin. Good morning. Do you know what special Sunday this is? I thought some of you would know. It's Pentecost. 
Pentecost is the day that we celebrate that the Holy Spirit came down from heaven and a whole bunch of people could speak in different languages that they had never even learned. Wouldn't that be nice? I like to think of it as a day when we celebrate all the wonderful languages and cultures from around the world. So I gathered some objects I have from our travels and I thought I would teach you how to say good morning in some different languages. Which object do you think comes from France? That's right, the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is one of the most famous buildings in the world and has become a symbol of France. Now let's go to Germany. How do you say good morning in German? I know some of you know. Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. And which object is from Germany? Yes, this little police car or Polizeiwagen. And it makes a different sound in Germany. The children say ta ti ta ta. In the East African language Swahili, how do you say hello? Do some of you remember from Vacation Bible School? Yes, it's Jumbo. Jumbo. And the object from East Africa is the giraffe. We saw many of these in the national park in Tanzania called the Serengeti. Don't you love giraffes? In Costa Rica, which is one of the many countries where people speak Spanish, they also have many animals. We especially liked the birds that are shown on this plate, the red macaws and the toucans. It was so exciting to see them flying in the air and up in trees, very tall trees there. And in Costa Rica and in other Spanish-speaking countries, you say good morning by saying buenos dias. Can you say that? Buenos dias. Or sometimes people just say buenos. In Japan, people say good morning by giving a bow and saying Ohayo gozaimasu, or for short, just Ohayo. Can you say that? Ohayo. This dog here, called an Inu Hariku, is a special dog that people buy for their children and put it in their bedroom to protect them. And last but not least here, we have a puppet I bought in India when I was there in January. It has strings to move its arms and legs. I think this is supposed to be a snake charmer. Snake charmers play bagpipe and a cobra comes out of a basket. We saw uh, people doing this for the tourists in India. And I know that a lot of you have learned the Indian greeting for hello, and it also means goodbye. We put our hands together like this and we say, Namaste. Remember, that's how we passed the peace for a while at Good Shepherd. It literally means, I greet the God in you. But it can also mean peace or just hello or goodbye. So with that, I'm going to say, let's celebrate all the wonderful languages and cultures in the world. This was just a few of them. So happy Pentecost and Namaste.
across all of our barriers of language, race, and nationality, unite us, Jesus. Across all of our mutual ignorance, prejudice, and hostility, unite us, Jesus. Across all of our differences of thought, outlook, and religious allegiances, unite us, Jesus. O God, for thy greater glory, gather us together, the separated Christians. O God, for the triumph of goodness and truth, gather together the separated Christians. O God, that there might be one flock, one shepherd, gather together the separated Christians. O God, that peace may reign in the world at last, gather together the separated Christians. O God, for the greater joy of the heart of your child, gather together the separated Christians. Through the redeeming power of Jesus Christ, the binding power of the Holy Spirit, and the ability of the Ancient One to make a new creation. Amen. Pentecost was a Jewish harvest festival that marked the 50th day after Passover. Luke portrays the Holy Spirit being poured out upon the disciples before the gathered and astonished people assembled in Jerusalem for the festival. Filled with the Spirit, the disciples were able to witness to the power of Christ's resurrection. A reading from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and in Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, Word of Life. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced 
when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of our Lord. posted on social media about the controversy of churches going back into their buildings and it had the Holy Spirit saying, no thanks, I'm good. Today we celebrate Pentecost, which is both the birthday of the church and the day when we remember the action of the Holy Spirit to, that violently pushed the disciples out of the upper room and into the streets in order to begin the work of bringing the lessons of Jesus Christ out into the world. In hearing this story again, we're reminded of God's will for the heavenly realm to be seen in our own world. This weekend, Good Shepherd had been planning a huge celebration for the return of ministry into our building. Notice that I did not say that we were going to celebrate going back to church. We've been very clear that church is located wherever we are, yet Still, after 21 months away due to the fire, this was going to be our time to fill the building with sounds of joy. This was to be our time to experience the light, the sound, and the energy found in our building. Instead, as one person put it, we find ourselves pushed out of our building not once but twice. Makes you wonder, what exactly is the Holy Spirit up to? Now, when you read through the scripture, you find that the Holy Spirit is mentioned many different times. She comforts, she intercedes, she corrects, she teaches, 
She mourns, she strengthens, she supports, she exposes, and she convicts. But more simply, the Holy Spirit acts in two ways, which is often symbolized by a spiral. She moves us closer into the bosom of God, and then in the process strengthens our faith. And then she whips us back out into the world, armed with our faith to encounter the reality of humanity. We're moved closer and sent out in a constant motion with neither action being more important than the other. In this time of pandemic, people are experiencing reality with both negative and positive reactions. There's confusion, worry, sadness, grief, a feeling of being unmoored and adrift. There's also curiosity, hopefulness, playfulness, exploration, inventiveness, a feeling of opportunities being opened up to all of us. Oh, the truth is that this experience is both. We are unmoored from the things that tethered us. Schedules are completely disrupted for better or worse. Old ways of doing things will no longer work, especially for people who live alone. Human connection is difficult and fraught with danger. Yet, it's also true that when we are forced to abandon the old ways, that it's there that innovations and revelations are emerging. Many pastors talk about the value of being forced to bring digital technology into their ministry. I think I'm one of them. Something that has been viewed as beyond their funding or expertise for some time. Businesses are learning to reinvent themselves or shift focus in their, in their uh, objectives. Conversations about inequality are finding their way into the public arena. Oddly, bird watching has become a new hobby for many of us. Some who have engaged in this practice for years can tell you the name of each bird, its bird call, and whether it's just here for the summer or passing through uh, for just the week or so. Most of us are just noticing the differences with a new curiosity. There was a story last week in the New York Times Magazine, I don't know if you got a chance to, to catch it, about World War II prisoners who lived in confined spaces under dire circumstances. Now, many began the practice of observing the birds with great detail. Their observations were on the level of things that you would find in the best bird manuals. This wasn't just a way of passing the time. It, it was a way to add some meaning and control into an experience that on the outside seemed to lack both. Hour after hour, day after day, with nothing to do under the constant reality of death, a situation that often leads to negative outcomes for those who survived the ordeal. Yet, the simple act of observing the birds in great detail transformed that experience. Suddenly, they were engaged in significant research, much like Jane Goodall. As each one beheld their individual time outside, those minutes added meaning to the rest of the hours in their day. The author of the story likened their experience to monks who are keeping hours. As I read through the article, I thought of the monks and the nuns during the time of the plague. Much of their work was tedious. Those who worked with the sick were in constant danger. Stopping for prey on a regular schedule, marking the hours, drew them closer to God and it helped them see God's love for the humanity that they were caring for. This bolstered their own sense that God was present and connected them to God's love for those who were sick. It gave them some semblance of control and abundant hope. The Holy Spirit at work, both bringing them closer to God's heart and moving them back out into the world to strengthen for service. These days, we've been pushed out of our normal routines we're pushed out of our offices, we're pushed out of our schools, we're pushed out of our church buildings. And the experience has granted us the ability to see the world in brand new ways. We've become observers of the world. We're not just watching birds, but we're watching many things. Parents are noticing all kinds of new things, and in becoming the main purveyors of classroom structure, both physical and emotional, parents are noticing how their children learn. They notice that the one who seems to be chatty throughout the lesson is also the one who's diligent and taking pride in completing all of their work. And the one who seems distracted and a little bit fidgety is 
also quite observant, picking up on little details both in the lesson and all around them in the world. These parental observations are helping create a new path forward for those parents to accompany their children on a life, of, uh, on a life journey of learning. Many of us are watching the news and we are learning more deeply about many issues. As the virus exposes the divide between people of wealth and people of poverty, people of color and white people, we are imagining new ways forward. A country that can choose to shut down can surely choose to reform. And the work of the Holy Spirit in bringing us closer to God opens our eyes to the heart of God as the love and the compassion and the mercy and the peace of God ground and comfort each and every one of us, we find some alleviation of our own worry and fear and grief. But that's not the only work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave the disciples a passion that pushed them violently out of their complacency, out of their comfort zone, out of fear for their own selves. In feeling the closeness of God, they felt both the comfort of God as well as a sense of urgency to bring God's love and compassion and mercy and peace to others. This is the point of conviction. In seeing God's heart, we feel God's pain at a world that's filled with inequality and injustice and hate. There is no need for a building to be open in order for us to offer meals to those who are recovering from surgery. And a porch box becomes a collection box for items that go out to food pantries experiencing exponential growth in need. We don't need to have that happen inside the church. Zoom becomes a format for people who desire to work on their bias and racism. So what is the Holy Spirit up to? Well, she's here with each and every one of us. There's 425 birds there, one for every member of the congregation. The doves in that mobile represent you with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with you. So what do you see? Is she moving you closer to God so that you might find comfort? She does that. Is she pushing you out into the world to be more engaged with the things that are happening in the greater world? Oh, she does that also. So the question is, where are you in the spiral? Amen. God, we are so happy that you are our God. We know that you listen to our prayers, just like you listen to the prayers of all your children around the world. Thank you for all of the different ways that people can serve you. You have given many different gifts to your church. Help us to use these gifts to help others and to show them your love. Help us to remember that we don't have to be in a church building to be a church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have given us a beautiful world. We thank you for bees to give you hon to give us honey. The changing seasons. I like the birds chirping. We thank you for cool water to cool down on a hot day. Help us to, to take care of all of creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sometimes people don't get along. We are sorry for the times we don't treat each other well. We are sorry for hurt feelings and mean actions. Help us to remember that we are all your children and that you celebrate our differences. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, thank you for doctors, nurses, pastors, counselors, and all those who care for people in need. We pray for those who need help to feel better in body, mind, or spirit. Today, we pray for healthcare workers, delivery people, those employed in grocery stores, for Mary Lou Odekirk, mother of Amy Dominguez as she recovers from a fall, for those that mourn the death of Colleen, for our veterans and active military personnel, for Pat Castle in the hospital, for Rita's sister Esther, Vaughn, Bevan, and Dwight, for Vicki, for a safe delivery of Ava Elise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for friends, for friends we love and friends we don't know yet. Thank you for all of the people that worship with us online. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God, you give us hope. Help us to follow the example of all the saints that have gone before us, especially the father of Pastor Dennis Buschowski, leading us to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Knowing you are always with us, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O oh Lord, this week we mourn the more than 100,000 coronavirus deaths here in the United States and the almost 400,000 deaths worldwide. We also mourn the deaths of George Floyd, Ahmed Arbery, and all victims of police violence and racism. In this moment of profound sorrow and frustration-fueled unrest and violence, Send us your healing and reconciling spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer according to your language or custom. I will be leading in Spanish. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad, así en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación, mas líbranos del mal. Porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria por siempre. Amén. Like wind and fire in nature provoking situations of danger or comfort, Wind and fire in scripture symbolize divine presence, evoking awe and terror and fascination. In mystical progression, Pentecost is analogous for the union of the soul with God. It is impossible to approach Pentecost without a sense of dread. The conferring of the Holy Spirit is the same motion as the commissioning of the apostles. We are sent out to the ends of the earth as bearers of the good news but good news is real change, and change is dangerous and often not received well, as tradition illustrates. Mechtild of Magdeburg, Germany, wrote in 12, and she lived in 1207 to 1297, and God said to the soul, I desired you before the world began. I desire you now, as you desire me, and where the desire of two come together. Their love is perfected. May we think on our desire for love perfected in our lives. Strength, many 
Spirit of God, may we breathe in and hold your love within us. May we breathe out and share it with the world. Spirit of God, may we breathe in and hold your peace within us. And may we breathe out and share it with the world. Spirit of God, may we breathe in and hold your life within us. And may we breathe out and share it with the world. May your breath enliven our breathing. Amen. <laughs> 